First of all, appreciate everyone be here, being here. It's a great day and uh, getting ready for a practice to go take on those Jets in New York. And I'll tell you, uh, they get some weapons over there. Their running game, both of their backs, Cook and Hall, they're as good as they get. I think Hall averages 5.9 a carry since he's been in the league. And he, he, can, he can do it all. He can break away. He can run you over. And Cook's been a perennial pro bowl of 41 career touchdowns, four-time 1,000-yard runner. So we have our hands full there. And then when you look at the perimeter, the other Wilson, the wide receiver, he can, he can break it away on, on any play. And then uh, Zach, I mean, he can do it. I mean, he can make every throw. I'm sure Coach Spag said that. We have our hands full up front trying to contain him. He's a really good scrambler. And I know Coach Sal is going to have that team ready to roll. And uh, so with that, uh, I'll leave, leave, open it up for questions. Reese Hall's coming off a, a tough injury, right? He's already come back and, and looked really good. Have you seen anything different from him this year than you saw before the injury? I'll tell you what, he broke, you know, against the Buffalo Bills, who have a really good front, good – he had, they had 172 yards rushing. He, he broke a couple long ones. And, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things that an injury like that takes time. And he's getting stronger and stronger as the, as the games have gone on. Joe, what have you seen when you watch George Karloffis on film this year? Just, I tell you, George is uh, he's, uh, he's another year in the system. He knows he, he, he does a great job studying and he knows what to do. And, and pre snap wise, he's ready to go. He has a. He has an awareness to him, and he's playing with instincts this year. And I tell you, he's, he's playing relentless, and he's doing a good job rushing the passer as well as playing the run. And a couple of weeks of Chris Jones back, which is kind of what you expected when, when he returned here in these, these looks. Absolutely. And when, when Chris came back, you know, we stayed in great touch with Chris, but Chris is going to come back in great shape, and that's what he did. And, uh, you know, the thing that was evident in the Jacksonville game, I have friends down there because I came from there, and I, I guess the – the weather was 100, and they said 117, whatever it was, on the, on the field. But the, the thing that stuck out the most is the last, second to last play of the game on defense, Chris had the sack with Felix, but that rush looked stronger than the first sack he had earlier in the game. And so that, that, that means he was in pretty good shape as it was. And, and he's, you know, he's going through everything and working through everything. And last week his snap count was down a little once the game got out of hand. So, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's worn back, ready to roll. He's not strictly one of your guys, but Leo has talked about how he's worked a lot with you and Terry over the last year as far as being more on ball and maybe playing an overhang position as a, as a pass rusher. How's, well, he, how's he kind of emerging? I'll tell you, Leo's, <laughs> we call him the beast for a reason. No, uh, Coach Spags has done a tremendous job getting opportunities for guys in certain packages when they show that, that A, they love football, and B, they're going to do what they're supposed to do. And, and Leo's doing a great job. He's, he's playing the middle in, 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 in the, in the uh, Buffalo package, playing the edge in our base package, and he's playing a little end in certain situations, and he's doing a great job, doing a great job in the run game. He studies the game, and he's powerful and doing a great job in terms of getting after the quarterback as well. You know, when you're, when, Joe, when you're facing a rushing attack like that with the Jets, um, what are you having to try to tell them to set from a tempo perspective when you're going against that run, rushing attack and the play action off? Well, I'll tell you what now, that's a great question. I mean, first of all, I mean, Coach Hackett, Coach Carter, the offensive line coach, he was at Tennessee for years and they had great rushing attacks, but they got two excellent backs and they got a real physical offensive line. So I told our guys, expect 35 runs and then the play action off of it. So you're going to do a great job. we we got to try to do our best to get them in those third and long situations. You don't want to have them in third and two and third and three all game. And that, that makes life easier for the quarterback. You want to have to get them behind the sticks to say, but we got our hands full. They do a lot of great things scheme-wise, and both the backs can take it to the house on any run. John, what kind of progress has uh, Mike Dana made this year? Oh, geez, Mike. I say this always, and, you know, it's my second year with Mike, and Mike did a great job uh, since the day he's got here. But uh, Mike's one of those guys that I've had some guys over the years that everything they do, he's doing it right. Coach Spaggs has a certain defense or a technique that he wants the ends to do. Mike's doing it right and doing it to, as hard as he can do it and doing it that way all the time. And I always tell the D-line, I don't want a box of chocolates. Okay, I want to know what – you know what you're getting in Mike Dana. And he's not just a guy that he's, – he's, he's a heck of a football player. And he's tough. He's physical. He, we move him inside. He plays all four positions across the front. And Mike Dana is going that way.